Good welcome to our church, Fields Church, on this wonderful Sunday morning. It's great to be back again. These Sundays seem to come round so quickly. How many of you are finding the weeks just a rolling by at the moment? Um, we just want to greet all of our family, church family, all those who are watching as guests. We've got some friends stuck in Australia, they can't get back. I want to welcome uh, Carol and Brian, if you're listening this Sunday, welcome to you. Be good to have you back in the UK at some point. They've been to our church in Ipswich and they love our people and uh, just good to see them hopefully tuning in this morning and anyone else around the world that is tuning in too, we want to welcome you. We want to give people the opportunity to give to the work of uh, Fields Church and uh, the work that we're doing here in Ipswich. We just thank everyone for giving faithfully every week, every month, every year. Those who give online and those who used to give um, on a Sunday morning, you can't do that. Uh, but we want to give you the opportunity to give. If you go to our website at fieldschurch.uk, you'll find all the bank details there and uh, you can give online. Again, we want to welcome you. We have a really special uh, morning this morning. We've got my good friend Mark Aikenhead all the way from the US of A, uh, who's going to share the word of life with us this morning. I met Mark and his wife in the 90s in South Africa in our church there. They went full time in 1993 and so did we. Uh, then a few years later they went off to America to plant a couple of churches and they now run a successful children's work and uh, yeah, ministering to children, the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
and then obviously we came here to the UK. Uh, we hadn't seen each other for a while, only at conferences when we'd go back to South Africa now and then, but we met a couple of years ago and rekindled our friendship. And Mark was coming to the UK and I invited him up to Ipswich to preach at Wonder and one of our Sunday morning services, which he did. And uh, we're just so privileged to have him come share this morning. So without further ado, I'd like you to introduce to Mark, just give him a warm welcome. Bless you and I'll speak to you later. Well, hello everybody from Ipswich. Uh, my name is Mark Aikenhead. Uh, I was there last year in Ipswich and I love the people of Ipswich, England. I can't wait to see you again. I'm looking forward to coming there this year. If we can just get over there, I will definitely come up and visit you guys. Hi, Pastor Richard. Hi, Pastor Esther. It's uh, great to be associated with you. It's wonderful to have spoken to you over the weekend. And um, Colleen and I just send our love to you, my family as well. I have uh, four kids and it's just wonderful to have all of us uh, here tonight. We've got a small group. I've got a, a group of people from our church over here so I can talk to them about this whole thing that we're going to speak about. So you guys are all on a topic about faith right now. And so Pastor Richard asked me to share some things from, from my perspective on faith and Tonight I'd like to talk to you guys about unleashing your faith, how to take it to a higher place. And what, unfortunately in the church today what's happened is, is that faith has sort of gotten a little bit of a negative connotation. Um, people have abused the whole mindset of faith. And I'd like to um, come back to a point where we look at it from a godly perspective and we look at it from what God wants us to do and how we use faith uh, to accomplish what God has planned for our lives, rather than trying to just get stuff or trying to get things done. And so tonight I'd like to um, uh, give you some pointers or tips on how you can apply your faith to unleash it in your world so that you can change your world. And if we look at it from a common sense point of view, there was a reason why God um, wanted faith on the earth. There was a reason why he wanted us to exercise our faith. And that is so that we can bring glory to him and so we can make his kingdom great on the earth. Our objective is to try and bring um, as much glory to God through our lives as we possibly can. To serve him with all of our heart. And we do that by faith. After all, we can't really see him. We sense him. We sense his presence. We feel his touch. We see the things inside of our lives of his operation. And so we know he exists. And especially those people that have given their lives to him and have made him Lord of their lives. What's happened is, is that they, their spirits have become alive to God. And this aliveness is the proof that God exists. The, the, the aliveness that we feel inside of our heart, the glow, the, the, the reality that we're serving somebody that, that loves us and that has our best interests at heart. In Romans chapter 10 and verse number 10. The Bible tells us that it is with the mouth that we confess and it is with our heart that we believe that Jesus is Lord. And so we can see that there's a very active part in our existence as spiritual beings, as physical beings on the earth. That confession has to be a part of our lives. In Mark 11, 22 and 23, it talks about, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you say, the word of your confession, you'll have whatever you say. And so it's interesting that in that particular scripture, the Lord talks about confession three times, but he only speaks about belief one time. And so Christians believe a lot, which is really cool, but they don't do a lot of confessions. And so the confession idea comes about in the exercising of faith. And it is the confession that actually brings about faith inside of our lives or activates faith or unleashes faith inside of our lives. And so I want to encourage you today to not look at your confession as a way of just confessing sin or, or revealing things to other people. That part of confession has a legitimacy inside of the word and it's necessary. And actually, I think that it is it leans very much to the process of our faith 
and how we should be exercising our faith. We should be confessing one to another the things that we are dealing with. If we have sin in our lives, then we are separated from God. We may have given our lives to Jesus. We may be close in our thinking towards him, but he's a holy God and we need to live holy. And if we have sin in our lives, there's a separation. And so in him is light. And, you know, there was a scripture that I read. It's, it's, it, it, it was about the Israelites and they were in a foreign land. And they said, how can we praise the Lord in a foreign land? They'd gone to a foreign land. They, they weren't in the, in, in, in the promised land. And we live, as born-again Christians, we live in the promised land. We're close to God. And to make that bond, that relationship with God, God work really, really well, we have to be in contact with other people. It's one of the reasons why I really don't like this COVID thing, because it's forced people to separate. The Bible says, he who separates himself seeks to do his own desire and enters into evil. He enters into the wrong things. It's almost like COVID has actually created a worldly functionality where people have separated themselves. We need to get back to each other. We need to get back close to each other. We need to confess our sins one to another. That part of confession is vital. And it's a process of unleashing our faith. As we get close to God and we become united with God again, by speaking to Him about those things in our life which should not be there, what happens is our, our faith level becomes activated. We start we're united with the Father. We become one with the Father. We're not separated. There's not that thing that's uh, causing guilt inside of our lives. It's causing things that are not righteous inside of our lives. And so what happens is we're able to hear His voice clearer. We're able to function in His presence clearer. We're able to um, put His Word into our hearts. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles if you have them with you. To Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verse number 15. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. Out of the Amplified Bible. So let's pray before we get into the Word tonight. Father, we thank you so much for your Word. It is the proof of our love for you when we plant it in our hearts. It is the proof of your love for us by presenting it on the earth. And so, Father, as we read your Word tonight, as we discover some things inside of your word help us to grow in our faith so that we can accomplish your plan on the earth ultimately father our goal is to glorify you with our lives in jesus name amen so we're going to look at ephesians chapter 5 and we're going to read from verse number 15 i'm going to read it out of the amplified bible it says that look carefully then how you walk live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people. Verse 16 says, making the most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. This is in the Amplified Bible. And verse 17, it says, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Now we could go on and we can discover a whole bunch of things, but tonight I want to speak to you about the process of, of discovering God's will for our life and then using that as the process of our confession so we can walk in faith. That's, that's the goal. And so what is God's will? God's will is his word. Everything that's written in here, everything that we can discover on how to live our lives is found in this word. You know, I bought a Mustang car <laughs> and uh, inside of that Mustang car, there is a manual for that car. It's about as thick as my Bible. And for me to get the most out of my Mustang, I'm going to have to find out exactly what things I need to do to that Mustang. To get the most out of the Mustang, I'm going to have to find out what it is, how I must treat that Mustang. 
Like it's not going to work if I put sugar into the petrol tank. It's not going to work if I if I put baby oil into the oil place. I don't know much about cars, but or or if I ride it with flat tires. It's only going to work if I follow the manufacturer's directions 100%. The same as with our lives. If we as a human being need an instruction manual on how to live our lives to the best this is the manual for life everything you need to function in your life is found right here in the word of god and this is the basis of our faith it's also the basis of our confession and so this is why i want to talk to you about tonight is about unleashing your faith it's about taking this thing this manual for our lives applying it into our lives, looking deep into it, discovering the things that God wants for our lives. Because every malady that is found on the earth is solvable by what is found inside of the Word of God. Everything. It doesn't matter what your problem is. There's an answer to your problem inside of the Word of God. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It can be disastrous for you. It can be mind-blowingly unbelievable to you, but every single thing that you're facing in a negative sense can be answered from inside of the Word of God. I'm not incompassionate to the realities of what people face. You know, on April 12th this year, 2020, my dad passed away and um, it was it was one of those things he he passed away from mesothelioma and um, uh, we discovered that he had this early 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 in January that that he had this cancer of the lungs and uh, I had prayed for my dad I've been born again for nearly 40 years actually it's just coming up this year for 40 years and in my life being born again, I have prayed daily for my family to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and I've been praying for my dad. And over the years, over the many years, I've prayed for my dad. I have argued with him, debated with him, opened the scriptures with him, read the word of God, and he never gave his life to Jesus. He refused to give his life to Jesus. Actually, I flew to England in November, which is when I went and saw you all, and one of the goals of my Going to England was so that I could minister to my dad because I knew that he wasn't well. And then I went again in January. We, we flew in in January, early January, to go and be with him and to also open the word of God to him because I knew that I knew that he was very sick. And he still held on to it. We fought uh, over the word of God. We debated intensely the word of God. And he still would not receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And for 40 years, almost 40 years, I've been praying for my dad that he would receive the Lord Jesus. And so on April the 12th this year, on his deathbed, right as he was breathing his last, my brother-in-law Daryl read, read John chapter 3 verse 16 to him and just asked him straight out, Brian, do you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And he nodded. And when he nodded, his whole countenance changed. And he gave his life to Jesus. And then he breathed his last and went to go and spend eternity with the Lord. How cool is that? 40 years of prayer, 40 years of debates, 40 years of fighting in a hopeless situation. And my faith bore fruit to the last minute. And it's been that way in my life. I want to encourage you. Some of you may be dealing with health issues. Some of you may be dealing with marriage issues. Some of you may be dealing with children issues, job issues. It doesn't matter what the issues are. We as human beings are going to face problems and trials. God never told us that we could have an easy ride on the earth. What he did say was, I have the answer for you right here in the word, in the Bible. And if you can find the scriptures and apply those scriptures to your life, you will have the answers that you need. You know, you've got to actually literally take the word of God and you've got to plant this inside of you. 
You've got to literally take it as seeds and plant it deep inside of your life and put it inside of your life. One day I was preaching um, with this Bible and I opened it up and I said, you've got to memorize the word. You've got to actually take the word and, and memorize scripture so that when you're attacked, you already have the scripture right on your fingertips, right at the, at the forefront of your mouth. And you can speak the word of God inside of your situation. When Colleen and I are driving in the car and an ambulance comes past, we say, thank you, Father, the person will not die until they receive you. And, and, and I've had experiences where people have had car accidents. I've been there right at, as people have died and prayed the prayer right there because I have the word of God planted in my life. And that is the basis of my confession. It is the basis of my faith and I walk in it. And so what I did was I take the Bible and I put it on my head like this and I would, I would keep it in, on my head as I was preaching. Now, that's just a physical representation of how we're supposed to put the word into us and, and have it in the forefront of our minds all the time. So that when, when I know it's a bit humorous, but when we when we need to, the word is right there, right on the forefront of our minds and we can speak it. Um, my son, Matthew, over here, he if, if he talks to me about something, the first thing that I do is I immediately say, what does the word say? And we talk immediately and I pull up scriptures and they come out of me. They just come out of me because I've put this into my heart. And so it doesn't really matter what you've been going through. It doesn't really matter the things that you're experiencing. What matters is, is how much of this do you have in here? How much of it do you have in, inside of your life? You need to study the word. You need to put it into your heart. You need to memorize it. You need to... Keep it in the forefront of your mind. And you need to believe God and trust God. Amen. An ant just called on Colleen. <laughs> Consider the ant. Consider the ant. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy now. <laughs> well, tonight I want to talk to you about a couple of things that we should be looking at. And there's one exercise that I'd really like to encourage you to do. And that is when you're reading the Bible. Hold a pen in your hand at the same time. And my pastor, Pastor Theo, Pastor Richard and Esther's um, pastor for many years, Pastor Theo and Beverly Vormerans from South Africa, um, told us often, write in your Bible. If, if, you, if you can't write in your Bible, throw it away and get a good one that you can write in. Get a, get a pen in your hand and, and highlight. Write in your Bible all the time. And every time you see a scripture that says, I am, for example, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, highlight it, put a circle around it, put a big X in the, in the, in the margin. And then when, you, when, you, when you're feeling down, when you're not feeling like you're up to life and you don't want to do, do the things, pull out those scriptures where you've highlighted them and just page through your Bible and you can call out those scriptures easily. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. My mind is renewed with the word of God. I live and move and have my being in him. Hallelujah. You can just say the word of God over and over again. And I found that when I get down or when I get depressed or when I get a little bit negative or circumstances come my way, um, interestingly enough, on April 12th, um, Colleen and I run a small business and our business was hit by a tornado. And I don't know if you all know anything about tornadoes, but they're pretty devastating. And our whole neighborhood for about six miles was completely devastated by this tornado. Houses were destroyed. There was over, I think it was 1,500 houses that were completely, totally destroyed where they had to actually remove them off of their foundations and rebuild those houses. Businesses were damaged. Ours was one of them. And I, I felt very uncomfortable about that. I was, I was really upset about it because it meant we had to close down our business so we could repair the building and, and get it fixed. And, and it, it was just a mess, a terrible mess. And yet the word of God sustains and the word of God carries you through. And so right in the middle of COVID, we're shutting down. We're essential services people. And then the tornado hits us and my dad dies. And all of this stuff comes all on top of us. But I was able to still keep my faith. I was able to still be joyful inside of it all. Because I have the word of God planted in my heart. And I know that he's coming through for me every minute of every day. 
I have a list of things that I read in my Bible that I have highlighted and I've taken them and put them in notes on my phone. And I'd like to read a couple of them to you. It's really cool. And um, I, I just felt like I needed to share these things with you and just read some of these. It says, commit your ways to the Lord and he will direct your path. Commit your way to God. He's going to direct your path. And so what I do is I take Psalm 37 verse 5. And I say, Lord, I commit my day to you. I commit my ways to you. And I trust you for directing my path. Today, my confession is, I trust you. You're going to direct my path. And it's amazing how many times he directs our paths and takes us into the, into the path of blessing. It's not about trying to become a millionaire or get another car or, or, or any of that kind of stuff. It's about living and moving and having your being in God. It's about having him direct your path. Another one is in Psalm 37 verse 4. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself. In the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart another one is James chapter 1 verse 5 I have the wisdom of God when you don't know how to communicate things when you don't know how to think through things just start saying over your life I declare I have the wisdom of God I have it right now another one is I have the mind of Christ I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me Philippians 4 verse 13 it says I everything I do prospers in Jesus name God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 7. These things are powerful scriptures. They're powerful statements. They're powerful things to speak over your lives. Remember in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible speaks that the basis of our salvation is confession and belief. Confession and belief. It says confession three times in that scripture and belief one time. We all believe, but how much do we confess? And that is what salvation is all about. It's not just salvation in our soul so we can go to heaven. It's salvation out of poverty. It's salvation out of mental distress. Salvation from sickness. Salvation from bad drugs, abuse, and poverty and and, and terrible things, the maladies that we face inside of our society. Everything that I do prospers in Jesus' name. I say that even when things are not prospering. And God has been able to bless us so dramatically, so powerfully. My thoughts are positive. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 9. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You are in me, Lord, and so I thank you that as I walk, I walk with your greatness inside of me. I'm confident because I know that you are living inside of me. These are the bases of our faith. These are the things that we need to be confessing and speaking about. My steps are ordered of the Lord. As a person, I'm successful. That's Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. We need to start saying, I'm successful. I'm going to do this. I can accomplish things. I can do things. Too many times we throw up our hands in horror and say, oh, I belong to a nanny state. I'll just let the government take care of me. No, rise up and be somebody different. Rise up and be somebody that's going to make a difference in your circles, in your environment, in your family. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. That's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Nothing is impossible for me. God, who is greatest on the earth, who runs this entire universe, he solves all the problems, lives deep inside of my heart. And so nothing is impossible for me. God never leaves me or forsakes me. Even in the hardest of situations, even in the most difficult of trials, even the most difficult things, God never leaves me or forsakes me. Colleen and I are busy in the process of looking at purchasing another building. And we're getting negatives coming at us, left, right, and center. Negatives, negatives, negatives. But you know what? It doesn't really matter if the negatives come. We're still going to pursue and we're still going to serve God regardless. Matthew, my, one of my sons, he's starting a, a business right now. And I asked him a question once. I said, how do you handle failure? How do you handle failure? And the question is very pertinent because how we handle the hard things that comes to us are going to be the things that we need to put the word against 
and look at the word and rise up with the word rather than the circumstances. That's what we have to do. And so I'm above beneath. Uh, sorry, I'm above only and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I see first the kingdom of God and all these things come to me. That's Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Colleen and I sing it all the time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to as Christians, we need to put this into here so that it comes out of here. And as we hear ourselves speaking the word of God, we become more positive. We become more attuned to what God wants for us. You know, I'm a winner. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. I'm a winner. I'm an adequate person. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 and 6. I'm adequate. I can do what I need to do. God has given me the gifts and talents and skills and abilities to do what I need to do. Colleen is hyper anointed to do certain things that I can't do. And together we make a great team. And I could never ever do the business that we do if it wasn't for Colleen. She's got those skills inside of her life. My life has purpose. So many times people commit suicide because they just don't have purpose. They don't have a purpose for living. And if we start saying that we have a purpose, and what is that purpose? To discover what that purpose is in our life. It's going to make a difference. Our business has a purpose. We want to make a difference. Amen. As a person, I'm successful. That's Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. I'm sufficient for every task. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I overcome every obstacle. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have divine protection. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. I'm secure and confident. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24 to 26. Under trial, I will stand. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. I get knocked down, but I get up again. <laughs> there was even a worldly song about that. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Ain't nothing going to keep me down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Ain't never going to be kept down. we got to get up again and fight on. You know why? Because God built us to be people of faith. He never built us to be people of fear. Today, I want to ask you, what is your confession? What is the thing that you're saying? What are the things that are coming out of your mouth? How are you speaking those things? Not so that you can become a millionaire, not to, to abuse the, the, the gifts that God has given us, but to just put His words into our lives so that we can make a difference. I'd like to pray for you now. Father, I just thank you for each person in Ipswich and over here in Chattanooga, whoever's watching us. And I ask that by your Spirit, you make a way for them to open up the Word of God and to provide them with the revelation, the understanding, the knowledge of your purposes for their lives so that they will apply it and put it into their hearts and speak it out so that they can live a successful, prosperous, and blessed life in Jesus' name. There might be some of you tonight that have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Tonight I'd like to give you an opportunity, or today I'm not too sure what time it is that you're watching. But I'd like to give you an opportunity, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I've mentioned the scripture several times tonight. In Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you'll be saved. Tonight, today, you may have given your life to Jesus. But you may have walked away from him. And if that's you, I'm speaking to you. You may have thought you have given your life to Jesus. Maybe you're not sure. Today I'm speaking to you. 
And maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. And what I've shared with you has resonated with you and you feel like you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life today. If that's you today, then I'd like to pray for you. But I'd like you to do something extra. I'd like you to step out. And while this video is playing, just speak out with your mouth. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to follow my prayer out loud. I'm going to say one phrase. You say the same phrase. Repeat it right after me. And if we could all do it in the room as well. Let's say this. Say, Father God, Father God, God. I come before you in the name of Jesus. I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I repent today. And I repent today. I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin. I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin. And I choose today. And I choose today to make you Lord of my life. To make you the Lord of my life. From today. From today, I declare, I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. That Jesus is Lord of my and life. I believe, and I believe in my heart, in my heart that, he is Lord. that He is Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That from today, that from today I can be called a child of God. I can be called a child of God. A Christian. Christian. And I know, and I know that when I die, that when I die, I will be in heaven with you. I will be in heaven with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you.